But since I have the mic, I'm going to go straight into politics. Is there somebody from Apple here? <laughs> <laughs> Doug? Anybody? We love you guys. We need NVIDIA support. Please. Please. I'm not going to... Sorry for putting the spotlight on you, but it's really, it's really important. Hopefully for what you do next, but what NVIDIA's helped us with, Red with, I've been trying to do for 10 years, and they've done it. And it's so significant, it's not good for the community to just be on one platform. So please just think about it. <laughs> please. Sorry. <laughs> Give me a mic. Anyways, sorry. No, thank you. Um, no, it is, it is hard. You know, we've been, we made it really easy to shoot high resolution video with our cameras. Our engineers, since the beginning on, with the red one, to shoot 4K, 5K, 6K, and now 8K in these little cameras, it was effortless to actually shoot them. And then, once you took that little card out and put them into your computer, fighting to get real time was always a struggle for everybody. That whole simple workflow, you have this beautiful high resolution image to get real time playback, even at 4K was difficult. We made a stupid thing called the Red Rocket, which <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> we had to do it. A lot of you hopefully bought them and they paid for themselves, hopefully. Um, but we made the Rocket and that was, we had to do it. Then we made the Rocket X, which was even more expensive, and I hate doing even more. But at that time, we switched over trying to get this GPU acceleration, especially for the Wavelet stuff, going on normal GPUs. And we talked to everybody. We had promises from other people. We worked and worked and worked, and our engineers got really close. And finally, NVIDIA stood up and said, hey, now it's time. Let's do this. And I can't believe in seems like a couple months, I know it was longer than that, but you guys nailed it. And I can't remember over the last few months how excited I was, every build I got, every beta build, and I'd put a, I know I'm not supposed to say this, but even a 1080 Ti card in there, and like, holy shit, like it fucking works. And the 2080 and the Titan and all the RTX cards just make it better. So you did it and thank you, it really is important. This stuff is really important for you to shoot on our cameras in 8K and not dread putting that into your computer because you're gonna have to do half resolution or quarter resolution or eighth resolution or whatever system you are. And to get that real time full resolution, it's massive. It's massively important. Um, so thank you. And thank you to the red engineers for sticking in toe-to-toe -to -toe with your guys. And I mean, it was definitely a, a group effort, but we did it and it's here and I love it. And the only thing I asked for is that to work on Apple. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever, we, it's here. Colorfront stepped up big time and Colorfront is working now. Of course, our other partners, our other partners have the SDK, the beta SDK, so that'll be rolling out soon. But this is important. So thank you. Thank you. This is really, personally, this is really important to me. So thank you. And this is John. Well, that's a tough act to follow. I think you said everything I wanted to say. I've been dreaming about this for the six years I've been at NVIDIA. Um, you know, this was a dream. Uh, we did debayering maybe five years ago. And that was half the problem. Uh, and then you had to buy two big Xeon processors that set you back $20,000 to then buy a GPU, and that was all good. But, yeah, I pitched the idea at NAB. Um, we shook hands on it the week before Seagraph in August. You guys gave us some great, clean, well-written CUDA code. Thank you, guys. We sent it to two of our development technology engineers in Germany, on a Saturday. By Monday, they had gotten it running two or three times faster than it had. Uh, 
by SeaGraph a week later, uh, we had hit the objective of 24 frames per second on a single latest generation NVIDIA GPU, the, the RTX series, if you, if you follow that stuff. Uh, and the last four months since then, uh, we've been tuning and hardening and you know, getting us to this point. There's still more work to be done, but it's been proven. Uh, we're really excited to be working with the Red Team. Every week we have a one hour call and we have had a Slack channel going back and forth. And it's, it's, this is one of the best, closest, shortest duration partnerships that I've been part of that has delivered uh, the goods like this. Usually it doesn't work like that. It, <laughs> well, we, we had a lot of highly motivated people at our end. Uh, Gail put together a great blog. Uh, we sent it to Jensen Wang, our CEO, over the weekend. And he said, this is awesome and suggested rewriting the headline, which we did. <laughs> and, and here we are to celebrate um, a new phase in post-production, 8K with RED. So thank you all. Good job. Good job. Hello, hello. Hi. All right, first of all, uh, thank you guys very much for coming out. Um, I understand that we are the last thing that stands between all of you and the bar in the lobby, and I'm heavily outnumbered. So we're gonna get right to it. Um, thank you guys for coming out. Uh, it means a great deal that you took time out of your busy schedules to really kind of celebrate this, this monumental milestone. And this is, uh, this is a really big one for us. So we all, understand and know the positives of working with high-resolution red files, and we also know what that means when you're trying to play them back. They're heavy, right? So our goal is making 8K effortless, and that's what we're here to do, and it's a really big deal. We're very excited about it. So the, in the main outline today, we want to talk about Red Code Raw, and then the second thing we'll touch on is 8K playback and encoding, and then we will touch lightly on our SDK and what that means. So Red Code Raw, um, I think the first thing, ah, here we go, 8K effortless, <laughs> our agenda, and Red Code Raw. All right, so I want to start by saying that compression isn't a bad word. And I feel like sometimes there's this negative connotation associated with it. But it's important to remember that when you are in a theater, like this, and you're watching a major motion picture, you're viewing a DCP. And this is, in fact, a compressed file. Now, in our cameras, we use a visually lossless wavelet-based compression that becomes even more efficient when you feed it more resolution. So Red Code has obviously been around since the beginning for us. It's what's made 4K possible back in 2007 on the Red One, and it's today making 8K image capture a possibility. And, and that's a big deal. It says a lot to the power of what that does. And we're going to kind of talk to um, how that makes it even more efficient when we're looking at actual data. So one thing that we're often asked about, um, well, not too often, but sometimes people are like, oh, well, I want uncompressed. And I'm not sure that they either fully know what they're asking for or they underestimate red code. So, we want to show you what uncompressed raw 8K looks like compared to red code raw 8K at 8 to 1 compression, which is a compression ratio that I would recommend to even some of the biggest productions uh, shooting on our cameras. And both of these are at 24 frames a second. So uncompressed 8K is 5,000 megabytes a second, which is 298 gigabytes a minute. And if you are recording onto a single red mag, the most common one is a 480, that means you're going to fill the card in a minute and a half. So that's not, that's not exactly efficient by my standards. Now, if we look at the same thing with red code, at 8 to 1, we are at 162 megabytes a second, which means we're capturing 9.5 gigs a minute. And on that same 480 gig red mag, we're able to capture 51 minutes. Now, that's, that's huge. So that alone speaks volumes to the power of red code. So let's just say that I am an incredibly talented director that likes to shoot a lot of takes and also shoots on red. <clears throat> David Fincher. And, <laughs> and we are going to shoot 99 takes of a five-minute scene. 
So let us show you kind of what that means as far as data. So uncompressed 8K, that 99 takes of a five minute scene would be 151 terabytes. And it would run you about $7,600. This is assuming that you know, the average cost for a terabyte is about 50 bucks. And it would require 302 Red Max. Now that's assuming you're shooting one camera. So if you have two cameras, you can go ahead and just double all of that. Now with Red Code Raw, these same 99 takes would be two terabytes, cost you about $100 in storage, and you can get through with about four or five Red Max. So that's a significant difference, and it really kind of speaks volumes to what Red Code can do. You are, it, you're not sacrificing quality, you are, your storage requirements are low, and you're saving money. These are all very important things to consider. So why am I going on about Red Code? We're here to talk about 8K playback. And the reason that our files feel heavy is because they need to be first decompressed and debared before you can play them back. And this is what requires a beefy system. It's not that 8K is a ton of data, which is a very common misconception. Uh, and we just proved that just now. It's that you have to, it requires some serious CPU processing power to unpack those files. That is, of course, until right now. And I'm going to turn it over to Dan for a sec. So prior to Red and NVIDIA teaming up, the CPU was responsible for the decompression, and the GPU was responsible for the image processing, which it also includes the bearing. Now that we work together, we're able to fully take advantage of today's GPU processing power. The best way to illustrate this is to simply show you guys. If you tried playing back AK full res, it probably looks something like this. The file would feel very heavy and need to constantly buffer to try to keep up. As you can see here, this is because the CPU is doing all the, de the decompression. So I'm zooming right here. The CPU is doing 100% of the work. I'm gonna let this play out just so you can experience what it's like to before our NVIDIA CUDA acceleration. This is a high-end machine that still struggles with playing 8K footage, and the results would be worse on an average machine. Let's all take this in because this is the last time you should be seeing this. <laughs> So now in the upcoming version of Red Cine X, to enable the NVIDIA GPU, we simply need to go to System, Preferences, and select CUDA in the pull-down. This moves the decompression to the graphics card for the CUDA-based acceleration. Now when playing back the same file, you'll notice that, that in Task Manager that the CPU is relaxing while the GPU is doing the heavy lifting. So let me zoom in for you guys. CPU is 15%. GPU is doing all the work for you. It's also worth pointing out how little disk usage it takes to play back the footage. It really only needs to accommodate the same data rate that the clip was captured at. Keep in mind this is 8K, so if you're shooting lower resolutions like 5K or 6K Dragon or 5K Gem Gemini, this would be screaming fast. So what does this mean for encoding? When it comes to creating dailies or deliverables, you are, you are encoding the clips to another file format or codec. The files still need to be decompressed prior to encoding. Previously, the CPU was responsible for the decompression and encoding, and the GPU was only responsible for the image processing. This was underutilizing the GPU. Now that the decompression has moved over to the GPU, which has plenty of power to handle the task, the CPU only needs to handle the encoding. This translates to faster transcodes. So now encoding is sped up since decompression is accelerated by the GPU, and really the main thing the CPU is responsible for is the encoding. So transcoding is now sped up three to five times faster depending on whether you're creating a 2K, 4K, or 8K file from the native red code file. Keep in mind this is all being done with one GPU, so the more you have, the better performance you'll get. So on to SDK. Before SDK, um, I think it's a good time to take the opportunity to just really give a round of applause to Red's engineering team and the NVIDIA team for making this happen. So uh, the last little bullet is about our SDK, and this is something that we're not taking on alone. Uh, this has been a collaboration between several companies, and so Red, NVIDIA, and uh, the top NLEs have been collaborating to ensure uh, efficient and effective integration of our SDK. We're planning to release the SDK uh, in Q1, so any other third party can implement this uh, GPU acceleration. 
The other part of this is we're going to be opening up a private and public beta for uh, Red City X that is leveraging this SDK. And we will have the private beta available sometime in December and then the public in January. So keep your eye out for that. If you are at all interested in being a part of that, uh, you can reach out to redbetasw at red.com and just throw them your, your system specs. And if you have a red camera, let them know which one. And that way, we can kind of track the process. So that's really it. Um, I think the, the one big takeaway from all of this is that this work has really addressed the last big bottleneck when working with red files. And that's huge. So Dan and I, we've both been with Red for uh, over 11 years now. And we're both passionate about filmmaking. We're passionate about cameras. And I would be lying to you if I said that I didn't take this stuff personally. And so when people come to us and they say, man, your cameras are incredible. I'm capturing beautiful pictures. And it's really elevated my career. But there's always that but. The files are hard to work with. Now. Our goal from the start has always been about enabling filmmakers. We want to enable the filmmaker and give them the tools to succeed. So we started with Red Alert. And that was you know, the first application that you can view the files in. And then we came out with Red Rushes. And Red Rushes was a tool to batch transcode a lot of files into another codec to make them more manageable or to work in other NLEs. And then um, shortly after Jared mentioned, his, uh, his hatred for them, the Red Rocket, <laughs> and, and, and the Rocket X. And those, I mean, they were great. They served a purpose, and they accelerated things. But it wasn't exactly really where we wanted to end up. It, 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 wasn't, it didn't completely solve the problem. So the main point is we don't want technology to interfere or impede the creative process. We want to enhance it. And I feel confident in saying that we have accomplished that. I think we're there. So no longer, really, are we forced to choose between smooth playback and viewing in full resolution. That's it. Thank you guys very much. We really appreciate you coming out tonight.